Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Central Coast Newspapers Video News. I'm Jackie Pearson. Today we're filming from the office of the Federal Member for Robertson, Ms Lucy Wicks. Welcome Lucy, thank you so much for making time to see us. Now I wanted to talk to you about 2017 in review and, and my understanding is that you are a person of faith and this year one of the challenging topics for you has been the same-sex marriage debate in which you um, stood on, on your position uh, and then when the results were in you voted accordingly. Tell me a bit about that experience for you as an individual and, well, and a representative yeah. of your community. That's actually a really lovely question Jackie, thank you and I actually really appreciate it. Uh, I am a person of faith, that is, that is absolutely true. Um, I try to allow my, my faith to define my actions and my values. Uh, as opposed to um, sort of, well, that, that's how I choose to live in, in, in that personal way. So yes, that is true. The reason, however, that I actually stood up and uh, was supporting the no case is because I was actually saying this is a very legitimate opportunity for us to actually fully explore mm -hmm. what may actually occur as a result of changing a very significant social institution. Um, that we ought to be able to, as part of any debate and as part of any change, be able to do that and to be able to do it in a respectful and a very open and an honest way. I was a massive supporter of the plebiscite for that reason. Um, and because I supported the, op the opportunity for all Australians to have their say, I placed on record very early on mm -hmm. that I would honour the outcome of that say. Um, so that Yes, I could express my view. Yes, I could say, look, I'd, I'd like to talk about um, issues that, that I had raised during the campaign. But democracy is an incredibly um, precious thing that we have here as a nation. And when we provided, well, yes, it's, it's a pretty unique platform. This doesn't happen every day, a plebiscite. It's not going to happen every day next year by any means. But it was, it was something that I felt was incredibly important that people had the opportunity to participate in. And I think seeing the very high participation rate probably lends weight to that. The participation mm -hmm. rate and the result as well um, has, given the, uh, has given the legislation great legitimacy. And uh, it really was um, an extraordinary day in the parliament when, uh, mm. when that legislation was passed. It's been um, a very interesting year in federal politics, not only because of that debate, but also the citizenship issue and and the feeling that you're practically always on a campaign footing, um, that, that that more than I've ever seen before. Um, first of all, are you going to run um, for the seat of Robertson again? And um, if so, what what's your your vision and and what's on on the agenda for Lucy Wicks? Well, yes, absolutely. If if the Liberal Party um, choose to um, ask me to continue to serve in this role and to be their candidate at the next election, that would be an absolute privilege and an absolute honour. Jackie, you're right that it probably seems that, um, you know, particularly in this day and age of, of very short news cycles where everything is about, you know, what's next and what's next and what's next, that perhaps it becomes easy to look at, okay, how do I focus on winning the next election? I. I see it a little bit differently. I see how do we use the weeks, the months and the years that we may have in this role for however long the Liberal Party and the people of the Central Coast may choose to have me there. How do those weeks and months and years go into building a better future for the Central Coast? Okay. And that, that happens regardless of whether there is a campaign next year, whether there is an election you know, around the corner whether something happens that means all of a sudden we're in election mode. I think the question of how do we build a better future for the Central Coast needs to be one that stands the test of time and that is not defined, is not defined by an election cycle. Benelong, however, the outcome of the Benelong by-election seems to have given your government, or the government that you're a part of, more stability than I've seen for a while. Um, does, does that make it easier now to, to stick to or, or feel comfortable in um, 
your leadership and your role under that leadership. Well, it's really interesting, Jackie, because you know I, you read the news reports and you know you, you sort of you sort of thought everybody thought the government was going for this great big walloping and we were going to lose Benelong and all these things were happening. And yet on the ground, that's not what we were being told. And on the ground here on the Central Coast, what I'm hearing about is people saying, we really need a university in Gosford. We really need those 600 jobs. We actually want to make it, we actually want, you know, the M1, M2 missing link to hurry up and be built because we want that, you know, that shorter commute time to Sydney. We want to see more local jobs and more investment here on the Central Coast. So I have different conversations with people one-on-one -on -one in the street, you know, street stalls, train stations, at coffee shops, at listening posts, than perhaps what you would see in the media. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in terms of Gosford, uh, the, there's quite a bit of federal funding um, in, in the pool, uh, both for the Performing Arts Centre and the Regional Library. Um, the time frame for delivery of the Regional Library, for example, in order to keep the $7 million that's been um, pledged by the State Government is 2020, I believe. Um, are you talking to the new council about that and um, would you help them if they needed an extension or um, assistance to, to keep that funding alive? Well, look, I'm talking to the new council on a regular basis and uh, particularly in contact, obviously, with local councils, councillors, with the mayor and, of course, with the CEO. I will say that since the 2016 election, actually before that, but, uh, you know, if, if, if we look at this, one of my great frustrations has been that we went to the people of the Central Coast with a growth plan for the Central Coast in 2013. Right. And we funded every single one of those commitments. And what's actually happened, there are a number of commitments that were made there that are still to be built or to be finalised. The money is there, but council has not finished those. So one of my jobs as a local federal member is to hold, um, is, is to make sure that we do see those you know, uh, projects come through to completion. An example of that is Langford Drive. And we had to fight, to be very honest, we had to fight very, very, very hard mm. to even see the construction that's now taking place um, towards the end of this year. But that was promised back in 2013 and the funding was in the May 2014 budget. The same goes with Kibbleplex, I might add. Seven million dollars from the federal budget for this state-of-the-art um, centre mm. that is part of, you know, is a, is a important piece in the puzzle to transform Gosford into the capital city that we actually deserve as a region. But we are now seeing that it, we, we still haven't seen a single sod turned on that project. So yes, it's very important that, particularly when council lobbies for funding, that they actually then honour the obligation to deliver it to the people of the Central Coast. I think people of the Central Coast have been let down by decades of promises but not the delivery that follows through. And look, you, you mentioned the Performing Arts Centre. I'm very pleased that uh, you know that we have contributed. We've been able to deliver a $10 million grant towards the $30 million build for that. But that's been a conversation so where's that for 50 money? years. That, that money is also dependent on project delivery, isn't it, really? I mean... Well, the money goes towards the Performing Arts Centre, but if you think about the conversation we've had here on the Central Coast, a conversation around a civic centre that, that Gosford can be proud of, a performing arts centre on the waterfront. We've been talking about this for years and years and years. And I really think if we were to give any sort of Christmas present to the electorate, it would be to see the import, these important projects started and in fact delivered. What are the impediments? Why are we not seeing it, in your opinion? Well, look, I am not a local councillor, but I will say it is very important that council does get on with the job of delivering the projects that were on the books, that were lobbied for, that were part of a very important um, plan to see the revitalisation of Gosford. The 600 jobs in Gosford is just one piece of that. The medical centre, medical university I should say, and the medical research institute is a really important piece. Well, we're getting on with that job. The New South Wales government has put in $350 million at least into making Gosford Hospital and the Gosford Hospital precinct absolutely state-of-the-art. 
We are seeing incredible investment in Gosford and we do need council to get on with the job of delivering these important There's projects. There's a state government element too though, isn't there? Are you, are you talking to the state representatives about their involvement oh, look, as well? There's, there's absolute, for everything I understand, there's absolute commitment, certainly for on, if we're talking about the Performing Arts Centre, certainly on the part of, of council, um, the state government, the federal government, we all do want to see it, uh, it built. So let's hope that 2018 is the year of, uh, of building. Finally, one more federal issue that I was interested in hearing from you about because um, Sean Gordon almost ran, ran as a Liberal candidate in the state um, by-election for Gosford and has been very vocal about the Uluru Statement from the Heart and um, that the next challenge facing the federal parliament is to um, have constitutional recognition, etc. Do you have a position uh, as, as an area with such a strong... Yeah. Um, land Council. Yeah, well, look, firstly, I, I just want to um, pay tribute to Sean Gordon and the Darkie Young um, Land Aboriginal Council. I think they do an extraordinary job here on the Central Coast. And I often talk with Sean, and um, I'm very grateful for his advice, for his input, and for his friendship. I'm also incredibly grateful for his determination to see more local jobs and more opportunities for Indigenous people here on the Central Coast. In terms of constitutional recognition, I've always been a very strong supporter of that. And, uh, you know, I do want to see something that uh, all Australians can embrace and that we can all be, we can all make sure is a unifying moment for Australia in our history. Okay, wonderful. Happy New Year. Thank, Thank you so you much Jackie. for your time, Lucy. Thank you. Thank you very much.